Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Ramiro. I live here in Los Angeles, California. I'm from New York City and I'm a member of Anticonquista. Anticonquista is the Communist Party of the Latin American and Caribbean diaspora. And welcome to episode two of Decolonizing Media. Decolonizing Media is a new video podcast available on Anticonquista where basically we break down all of the bullshit we hear in mainstream media. As revolutionaries, we know that media is colonized because of the capitalist system. Anything that's not profitable or is against the law of profit for the ruling class and the rich is portrayed as bad and negative. So today we are going to talk about the migrant caravan. Um, I'm sure you've all seen it in the media, um, all over the news. Everyone's talking about uh, this large group of, of people leaving Central America, specifically Honduras, to um, head to the United States to pass through Mexico and to find a new life in the north. But before we do that, I just wanted to, you know, take a second to mention that this topic really hits close to home for me. My family is from Honduras. Uh, my family is actually from the same department, Cortes, uh, as San Pedro Sula, which is where the migrant caravan took off from. Um, not too long ago, a few days ago. And so, you know, for me, although my family and and me personally, we've had a very different experience from the majority of Honduran people, uh, we've been lucky enough to not have gone through those hardships that people are going through now. Um, it certainly does um, hit close to home because I know a lot of the places where uh, these people are coming from, and I know what the situation is like there on the ground. So I just want to wanted to put that out there as well. And obviously, as I mentioned earlier, I think the whole notion of uh, being unbiased in media is bullshit anyway. Um, so I can say that this decolonizing um, session and episode is comes from a communist and anti-imperialist perspective about uh, the situation with the migrant caravan. So let's go over what exactly is going on with the migrant caravan. First, it's important to mention that it it, is, it isn't the first time that Hondurans and Central Americans are leaving their homelands in mass and crossing through Mexico to go to the United States. That's number one. There's been migrant caravans from those regions since the 80s during civil wars between leftist revolutionaries and right-wing military dictatorships. And since 2009, when the U.S. government helped oust a progressive leader in the country named Manuel Zelaya Rosales, who is president of Honduras, uh, he was progressive. He supported Alba. He supported Hugo Chavez. He supported Cuba. Uh, he wasn't a communist, but he was progressive for that country. Um, and since his ousting on Jan uh, June 28th, 2009, uh, Honduras has just been a state of chaos. Obviously, it wasn't perfect before that. Um, but a lot of the issues that are at the root of this crisis right now uh, stem from the post-coup violence and poverty from 2009. So that's the starting point that I wanted to give you all, because what we're hearing in the media is very recent. They're making it seem like one day, you know, just thousands of people woke up and were like, you know what? We're going to walk through the desert through thousands of miles of terrain to go to the United States and fuck up people's lives. And that's kind of the way that people have been portraying, especially the right wing media. The liberal media has been a little more sympathetic, but obviously from a very opportunistic uh, angle and perspective. The last major caravan that took place was in 2014, when thousands of undocumented miners, mainly from Honduras, took the voyage north to the United States. And that was around the time that images came out um, from the border of children who were locked up in cages. Um, I, I'm not sure if you remember that, but, uh, you know, just Google 2014 child migrant crisis and, and you'll quickly remember uh, what I'm talking about. There were images of children locked up in cages, um, just some really disgusting shit that the U.S. government was doing under Obama, under Barack Obama, who supposedly is progressive and uh, is for human rights. So this issue is not exclusive to Trump. This issue is not exclusive to the Republican Party. 
And as I said, a lot of miners left in 2014. They left Honduras. Uh, this was the same year that Honduras gained notoriety around the world for having the highest homicide rate uh, globally. Um, and at that same time, there were a lot of wars between MS-13 and Barrio de Siocho, which are the two main gangs in the country, as well as the right-wing uh, death squads that were persecuting um, and killing uh, activists Margarita Morillo, Berta Cáceres, etc. Since 2009, there's been tons of violence in the country, and in 2014, that was a major time period that people decided to leave. And in early October of this year, 2018, Leftist journalist and former congressman Bartolo Fuentes, a member of the Liberty and Refoundation Party, Libertad y Refundación Libre, he began making plans to organize a large migrant caravan departing from San Pedro Sula, which is, uh, as I mentioned before, in the same department where my family's from in the north, uh, one of the major cities in the country. Fuentes, understanding that people fleeing the country in small groups are easier to apprehend and catch, pointed out that there's strength in numbers, that if people go together, if people march together and have each other's backs and defend each other, it's more of a chance to get through the country, through Mexico, uh, safe. Because as you know, a lot of terrible things happen to people on their journey uh, through Mexico to the United States, such as uh, especially women who are often uh, violated and abused um, and robbed. Uh, and so... You know, he, Fuentes, basically said, if we're all leaving, if we all want to go, we should all go together. By October 12th, hundreds of Hondurans gathered in San Pedro Sula to participate in the caravan, setting foot the next morning. The caravan swelled to thousands of people. And I'm sure you've seen the pictures. I saw that video just a few days ago of that crowd, that huge crowd of people on the bridge uh, between Guatemala and Mexico. And it was packed. I mean, you see the look on people's faces and they just want to leave the country uh, because of all the crazy stuff that's going on there right now. As the caravan passed through the Guatemalan city of Chiquimula, Fuentes was arrested by police and was deported back to Honduras. Other Hondurans who were traveling on buses had their papers seized or were arrested, forcing them to go back home on foot as well. But the majority stayed. The majority uh, stood and fought with the crowd. By the time the caravan reached the Guatemala-Mexico border on October 19th, at least 4,000 people packed that bridge that I just mentioned right now. 4,000 people. I'm, I'm honestly surprised that bridge didn't collapse because, I mean, if you see the images, it's, it's insane. And the people, when they were on the bridge, they basically made their way past the gate, the Mexican border. They tore down the fences and they threw stones and shoes at the the Mexican uh, border police. So my main critique of the coverage of the caravan in general is that, you know, everyone's asking, how did this happen? Like, what is causing this? And both liberal and conservative media are totally ignoring the elephant in the room. They're ignoring the fact that this crisis is a, a symptom, is a product of capitalism and imperialism, the capitalist imperialist system. What is capitalism and imperialism? Capitalism is a system, an economic system, based on private property, profits. Uh, imperialism is these massive companies and corporations based in the first world countries like the United States, uh, the United Kingdom, uh, all over Europe, that control and dominate the market. They have a monopoly over the global market. Uh, and basically countries like Honduras and El Salvador and Guatemala are just plantations for them to get fruit and other commodities and cheap labor. This capitalist imperialist system is the root cause of this whole problem. Just as the U.S. funded civil wars in El Salvador, Nicaragua and Guatemala created the first waves of migrant caravans in the 80s, the U.S. funded coup in Honduras in 2009 created this mess. You have a situation where Celaya came to power in Honduras and he wanted to nationalize industries. He wanted to use the profits made from things like coffee and bananas, very modest profits, uh, to go to the people of that country, to go uh, to the poor people, instead of these wealthy foreign corporations based on New York and London. But because that interrupts the flow of profits for the capitalist ruling class, they intended to get him out and they did. Um, and there's all these documents showing the connection between Obama, Hillary Clinton, uh, and the U.S. Embassy in Honduras and helping out with this coup 
and these uh, corporations basically creating a smear campaign against Zelaya, uh, saying that, you know, he's going to be the next Hugo Chavez and saying that he's going to uh, wreck the economy. So this is part of the capitalist imperialist system. He threatened the rule of profits. He was removed. A right wing libertarian, you know, militaristic regime was implemented. And now there's rampant poverty. There's hunger. There's inequality. Honduras is, you know, the second poorest country in the Western Hemisphere after Haiti. And that's a product of capitalism, but it's never talked about like that. When people leave Venezuela or Cuba, which are, you know, moving towards socialism and building socialist economies, it's always blamed on socialism. But because in this case, Honduras, Guatemala, and El Salvador are predominantly capitalist economies, it's never seen as a crisis of capitalism because the media is owned by the capitalists. And so they're not going to say that, right? And that's something that we have to realize is, you know, they intentionally frame these crises as ways that, uh, in ways that benefit a certain class. And in this case, they're hiding the fact that these countries are free market, free market economies with private property and industry um, from the public. So it's not seen as a, a crisis of capitalism or imperialism. And then, you know, you have liberal media that's placing the blame solely on Trump and Juan Orlando Hernandez, who's the president of Honduras. Juan Orlando Hernandez, he's a right winger. He's with the National Party. And uh, obviously, he's allied with Trump and Israel. Um, but, you know, they're just placing the liberal media is just placing the blame on, on them, too. But remember, it was Obama and Hillary Clinton that uh, were in power when the coup happened in Honduras in 2009. And you know, the liberals are just as complicit in this imperialist uh, situation as the conservatives are. The craziest fucking thing I've heard so far in this whole entire coverage of the mi migrant caravan is conservative media saying something along the lines of Venezuela is to blame for the situation. I'm going to show you real quick a video um, that made by Glenn Beck. Glenn Beck is a U.S. right-wing uh, Christian fundamentalist uh, conservative who has a, a network called The Blaze. And basically, he blamed the situation on, on Venezuela. It's just, it's fucking ridiculous, honestly. Like, it's everything but imperialism or capitalism. You know, he, he just totally claims that it's Maduro and Venezuela without providing any evidence. Um, so let's take a look at what he says. Who is writing the check for all of this? Well, I asked Governor Abbott about it yesterday in an interview. Who's funding all this? He hinted that the Trump administration was fully aware. Now, my question is, did Mike Pence let the cat out of the bag yesterday from the Oval Office? Mike Pence, our vice president, said, quote, at the president's direction, I spoke to President Hernandez of Honduras. He told me that the caravan that is now making its way through Mexico, headed for our southern border, is organized by leftist organizations and financed by Venezuela. This isn't Donald Trump. This isn't Mike Pence. Wow, that's fucking ridiculous. Why would they do that right now in a time when they're under attack internationally by the U.S., by the European Union? Uh, you know, they face sanctions, all these oil uh, sanctions and all these things that are really hurting their economy. Why would they go out of their way to create a situation like this with, you know, and there's no proof of it. Honestly, it's just complete bullshit. And there's people out there who are going to eat that shit up. I'm telling you, and they're going to be like, you know, you see, this is why uh, Maduro needs to get overthrown and da, da, da. It's just complete nonsense. This is the president of Honduras. Now that puts this caravan into a completely different context, doesn't it? This caravan of poor migrant workers has suddenly become an invasion force. This is a weaponized attack. But I know CNN doesn't want to cover that. Can you just please find out, do they have enough water? Who's bringing that water in? Can you please have some compassion and just find out who's feeding these people? Who's caring for their medical needs on a 2,500-mile journey? 
Can you please find that out for the love of humanity? You know who's actually feeding and clothing a lot of the migrants? It's the Mexican and Guatemalan people who have been kind enough to open up their homes and their hearts and to provide food for migrants who have nothing to eat. And so it's just fucking disgusting, man, with the way this guy talks about these people who, who need help and, um, and who desperately need food and clothing, acting as if they're being paid by Maduro and Venezuela. It's the Mexican and Guatemalan people, the working class people, the poor people, who have a lot in common with the people of Honduras, the working class, and have the same enemies that have come together and have shared the little that they have. So it's just fucking ridiculous what this guy's saying. I pointed out on multiple occasions the caravan organizers have ties to both Castro and Maduro in Venezuela and Cuba. This new information from Mike Pence makes sense. If you're Venezuelan President Maduro, you want to attack the United States, but you barely have enough money to buy any toilet paper, how do you do it? There's no money to buy toilet paper in Venezuela because of U.S. inflation, U.S. economic war, U.S. sabotage of the economy. Not because of socialism, not because of the path of development that the government has been trying to do. They've been trying to improve the economy, but... The United States has constantly tried to invade all these countries, including Venezuela, and it's open, you know, it's openly there to sabotage it. So Glenn Beck is, oh man, he's a fucking idiot. Well, you don't use conventional means. You reach out to your allies, your revolutionaries, your Marxist zealots in South America, and you organize and fund thousands of people to flood the U.S. border. It's a pretty inventive way to strike back. Not only is it a form of economic warfare, but it also destabilizes the U.S. political structure. Oh, you mean like the same way the United States has been doing for over 100 years all over the world, invading over 150 countries? and manipulating elections all over the world and destabilizing political systems all over the world. This guy has no clue about what the U.S. has done on the global scale to destroy and wreck other economies like Venezuela, like Cuba, like, like Nicaragua. And that's not to mention how many criminal elements might be tagging along. How many Venezuelan or Cuban spies are uh, using this as cover to enter our country? How many terrorists might be riding along with the intention of attacking the U.S. targets? Reports this morning are saying that more than two caravans, two more caravans are currently forming. One in El Salvador and now one in Guatemala. To use a military term, are we being attacked in waves? Was the first caravan of 7,000 just the first wave? How many more will we see? And if this allegation is correct, there is no other way to describe it. The United States is under attack. So that's just like one example of just the most egregious shit I've seen about the migrant caravan. I mean, honestly, most of the stuff is liberal media, obviously pointing out some issues which are important to, to bring out, but just the way they um, address the situation is completely devoid of anything of, you know, the 2009 coup, the violence that has happened in Honduras, you know, after, um, after the military intervention, uh, all the activists who've been killed, the hunger, the inequality, and this is all because of capitalism. There's a free market economy. There's no centrally planned economy. So private companies do whatever they want all over. And people have no jobs. People have uh, very little to eat. Uh, the anarchy of the market, as Karl Marx talked about in Capital, rules in Honduras. And people are fleeing for that reason. But you'll never see in the mainstream media it being framed as people fleeing uh, capitalism. They're never going to say that. This is an issue of capitalism and imperialism this is an issue of a system that's decaying a global system that exploits our people um and is collapsing and now the situ the the problems that have been created because of this economic system are coming back home uh, and affecting people at the wallet at the border um, and i think it's good that the united states is scared for once because Far too often, it's been other countries and other people who have been scared of the United States. 
So that's pretty much it. Um, I just wanted to make that point. Migrant caravan is a symptom, is a product of capitalism and imperialism. And you can't understand it without understanding that basic principle. So thank you all for tuning in today. Again, this is uh, episode two of Decolonizing Media for Anticonquista. Anticonquista is the Communist Party of the Latin American and Caribbean diaspora. Follow us on SoundCloud and on YouTube backslash Anticonquista and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well at Anticonquista. And make sure to check out our website, Anticonquista.com. We have a lot of articles, good analysis of the same things we're talking about today with imperialism and migration uh, with other countries as well. So uh, thank you all for tuning in and hope to talk to you soon.